Descriptive writing creates pictures and captures sensations. It's crucial in fiction, nonfiction, and even poetry. Poet laureate and Pulitzer Prize winning writer Rita Dove uses description in both her poetry and prose. Descriptive writing to me is something which engages the senses, all of the senses, and we feel, I think, most drawn into a descriptive passage when we can smell it, we can hear the things in the passage, when we can feel the breeze that sweeps through a valley. That's the kind of descriptive writing that comes alive. And that means using the kind of details that will recreate a world. Trying to recreate a scene in such a way that someone who's never been in that scene can imagine what it's like. In terms of poetry more than prose, one of my objectives is in fact to have the language itself sing. I think in prose too I want the language to take off on its own and compel you. It's not really the event itself that is compelling to it. It's the way that it is written, the way that it is expressed, that allows us to see it or experience it anew. And that's why the language is very important. In her daily life, Dove takes notes on any experience or impression that's interesting enough to stop her for an instant. She collects these moments for later use. I keep notebooks, and in those notebooks I will put down, you could say personal experiences, but it's usually in the way of impressions, and again description, what it was like on a certain day when this happened, where the sun was slanting, how the chair felt when I was sitting in it. And when I go in that kind of specific detail, it's a lot easier than to transfer a personal experience onto a character. When it comes time to write, Dove retreats to a cabin on her property and begins organizing her thoughts and ideas. I come out to my cabin and I sit down where it's quiet and where there'll be no disturbances and I leaf through my notebooks. And if something strikes me, again, if it pops up off of the page of the notebook and makes me curious to know more, that's when I begin to write. I try to stay actually in the dark about exactly where I'm headed in a poem or a story or a novel until the character begins to take on a life of their own and then they'll tell you where they want to go. You know, once a character begins to take life, it really is a matter of almost taking notation. You know, if they have a character, if they have a personality that, that is developed, you know something about their past. To help her write descriptions of her characters and settings, Dove uses index cards to keep her thoughts organized. Sometimes as I'm writing, I'll, I'll hit a point where I'll say, oh, I'll have to describe what the air felt like when she opened up the door the first time at night. But at this point, I really want to go with, with her. I want to get her across the street. So I'll make a note on an index card, describe this night. And then later, I can go back and in peace and quiet sit there and describe that and, and fit it in or fit in portions of that description. When she chooses details for her descriptive passages, Dove prefers the unexpected, not the predictable. I'll try to choose a detail that has not only a, a way of engaging our senses, but also sounds arresting, sounds interesting. If I'm trying to describe a spring day, or the smell of the earth, let's say, kind of ordinary things you think about is that it smells musky, that it smells fresh, that it might smell close or wet. but it, it might be more interesting to use something like, say, that it smells like mushrooms growing, for instance, or that it smells gingery, or that the earth smelled as if it were turning over in its sleep. In other words, to do something that, that makes you think about something very ordinary in a new and different way. To avoid leaving out details that are clear in her mind but may be unfamiliar to the reader, Dove tries to look at her character and settings from another point of view. When you know a place or a person or an event really well, one of the things to be aware of is that you are going to leave out telling details because you know them so well that you've incorporated them into your whole psyche. I would suggest changing the point of view. In other words, if you know an event very well, perhaps you should try imagining it from the point of view of a grasshopper or from the point of view of a, of a jet pilot who was just about to land and sees it taking place below him. Mainly because that will give you a chance to look at the scene 
objectively to turn and look at it a different way. Once she's finished a rough draft, Dove begins revising and continues doing so until she's completely satisfied with her work. I revise incessantly. I love revision, and that's where a lot of the exciting things happen. I'd say that with a given poem, I might revise, I might have 30 or 40 drafts of the poem. And, and though it's work, it's really exciting work, so I don't think of it as drudgery. What I'll tend to do is, after I've finished one draft of a piece, is to put it down and leave it um, to be looked at at a time when I am in one of my worst moods. This is a way of getting the critic in me to come out. So since I work a lot at night, I will put the poem or the story on the desk in such a way that it's the first thing I see in the morning before I have my coffee. And if it can stand up to that scrutiny, um, then I know there must be something there. In the instance of choosing one specific detail, let's say one word over another, in the case of having two or three adjectives, um, it was a long, dry afternoon. Probably I'd choose dry as opposed to long because dry gives you such a feeling of discomfort that it'll make the afternoon seem long as well. I'll often ask myself, which one of these will do double duty? Which word gives you more options? The thing to remember about revision is that you can always go back to the draft before. Nothing is ever lost. You can take a story and change someone's name and their age and then see what happens. But remember that you can always return if it doesn't work out.